Hello, and welcome back to another episode recap where I'll lay out five things that I learned from my conversation with a historical expert. And today we'll be talking about the movie Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Now, if you're a regular listener of the audio version of the Based on a True Story podcast, you might have seen the episode hit your feed where I had author Matthew Pauly on the show to talk about the historical accuracy of the movie. Matthew's book is considered by many to be one of the best biographies on the life of Bruce Lee, and it's called Bruce Lee, A Life, and it's available at your local bookstore and on the giant bookstore on the web. Now, if you haven't had the time to listen to my conversation with Matthew yet, well, that's why I'm here in this video to recap five things that I learned about the historical accuracy of the movie Dragon, the Bruce Lee story from Matthew Pauly. So let's get started. Number one. Born in the USA. If you're a fan of Bruce Lee, you probably already know that he was born in the United States while his father was on tour with the Cantonese Opera Company in 1940. And the movie does mention that. But the movie also makes it seem like Bruce's father kept this a secret and didn't tell Bruce about it until he was much older. As for that part, Matthew explained that's not true. Bruce knew that he was born in the US long before the movie makes it seem. It just wasn't that big of a deal until Bruce, who liked to pick fights as a teenager, picked a fight with someone he probably shouldn't have, and then the cops got involved, and since Bruce had a history of picking fights, they already knew his name, so basically they came to Bruce's parents and told them if Bruce didn't get straightened out, he was going to be arrested. So that's why Bruce ended up going to America. Oh, and by parents, I actually mean parents, even though the movie seems to show Bruce as an only child with only his father around. The truth is that Bruce's mother existed and he had four siblings. Number two, Bruce Lee, the actor. One point that really stood out to me during my conversation with Matthew was how any movie about Bruce Lee is going to be locked into a specific genre. Everyone expects a movie about Bruce Lee to be a kung fu movie. But if it's a true biography about Bruce Lee's life, then it won't necessarily straight up be a kung fu movie. Yes, Bruce was a great fighter, but he was an actor first. Matthew told me that Bruce was a child actor in Hong Kong long before he started his martial arts training. So the way the movie implies that Bruce Lee started off as a martial artist who then became an actor, it's actually backwards. Bruce Lee was an actor first, and then he became a martial artist. As a bit of movie trivia for you, a little fun fact, even though he wasn't credited, Bruce, Bruce's first role in a movie was in 1941 when he was only one year old. He was credited in his first role for a movie called The Birth of Mankind that was released in 1946 when Bruce was five. Number three, Johnny Soon. One of the key fights in the movie is with someone named Johnny Soon. The events, according to the movie, show Bruce defeating Johnny, but then just as Bruce is leaving with his back turned, Johnny kicks Bruce in the back, that breaks Bruce's back, and forces him to spend some time in the hospital from a broken back. Matthew told me that the character of Johnny Soon was based on a person named Wong Jackman. And it is true that Bruce Lee fought Wong Jackman. It's one of the most famous kung fu fights of all time. But what's not true is the way the movie shows Bruce Lee getting his back broken in the fight. To this day, a lot of people think Wong Jackman broke Bruce Lee's back because of that scene in Dragon. But Matthew explained to me that's not what happened. In fact, Wong Jackman, when he saw the movie himself, he was so upset that he sued over the way the movie portrayed the event. Although it is true that Bruce Lee ended up hurting his back, but it happened four or five years after the fight with Wong Jackman when Bruce was picking up some dead weight off the ground. I guess he hadn't warmed up, so he strained his back. Number four, Kung Fu, the TV show. In the movie, we see Bruce Lee help come up with an idea for a TV show called Kung Fu, and then he gets passed over for the lead role in favor of David Carradine. Then after this, Bruce leaves Hollywood and goes back to Hong Kong. Matthew told me that this depiction in the movie has led to a myth that a lot of people still believe, that Bruce Lee left Hollywood because of the racism he faced and he was passed over for the TV show called Kung Fu. 
Matthew clarified that even though Bruce Lee did face racism in Hollywood, he was already in Hong Kong when they started casting for the TV show Kung Fu. So what really happened, and the timeline here doesn't seem to fit with what the movie shows, what really happened was the idea for the Kung Fu uh, show was actually going to be a movie at first. That idea died for Kung Fu the movie, as many movie ideas do in Hollywood. Bruce Lee needed money, so he signed a movie deal that took him back to Hong Kong. While he was there, the producers in Hollywood decided to revisit the idea for Kung Fu, and instead of having it be a movie, to have it be a TV show. So Bruce flew back to Hollywood to audition for the role, and at that point, he wasn't given the role, very possibly because of racism there, although that would never be the official reason, so I guess we'll never really know. Oh, and the idea for the Kung Fu show, the movie seems to imply that it was uh, Bruce Lee's idea, uh, but he did not help come up with that idea like the movie seems to show. Number five, the demon. Throughout the movie, there's an ongoing theme about a demon. It starts when the movie talks about Bruce's older brother dying. According to the movie, that's a bad omen, and Bruce's father warns him that the demon will be coming for him next. That's actually one of the reasons why the movie suggests he has to move to America. And his father tells Bruce that they had to Bruce him, uh, they had to dress him up in female clothes and and hide him from the demon. Well, Matthew explained to me that there were a few kernels of truth in there. For example, the first male child in the Lee family did die as a child, and so as was Chinese custom as a form of superstition, Bruce's parents dressed him in female clothes, uh, gave him a female nickname, even pierced his ear as a child, but Matthew told me that's about as far as it went. The movie heavily implies this demon was something that haunted Bruce throughout his life through hallucinations, and Matthew told me that didn't happen. Bruce's father never warned him about a demon coming to get him, and Bruce himself didn't hallucinate that a demon was trying to chase him throughout his life. That's all for today, and hopefully you enjoyed this episode recap of five things that I learned from Matthew Pauly about the historical accuracy of the movie Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. And if you want to hear even more details about the historical accuracy of the movie, you can listen to my full interview with Matthew over at basedonatruestorypodcast.com slash 154. Once again, that's basedonatruestorypodcast.com slash 154. And while you're at it, don't forget to pick up a copy of Matthew's excellent biography called Bruce Lee, A Life. In the meantime, for more recaps and full-length episodes of Based on a True Story, Hit that subscribe button right now. Thanks for watching.